going to come over here. We're going to take a look at some software options you have, obviously, that you would have wanted to set up ahead of time. So I found about three different programs that I tried, and I'll give you the pluses and minuses. Uh, the first one is the one that you're kind of seeing active on the background there. This one actually works with the background. It's called, I don't know if you can get a, a view of that, Meishan Wall, M-E-Y-S-H-A-N-W-A-L-L. -L. And uh, if you do a Google search for that, you'll find that. The reason I like this is because it gives uh, the options to have Flickr accounts, Raya, 23HQ, Picasa, or use local images, or any combination of those things. So um, that's nice if, if you have other, uh, if you have a lot of pictures in, in different sites. The reason I didn't like it as much is um, you can only set it to a minimum of one minute in the settings here, and uh, you can have it go up to days. And it's, a, it's supposed to be used for changing your wallpaper, and most people don't want their wallpapers changing every 10 seconds. But if you're a digital picture frame, you only want the pictures changing once a minute, then this is an acceptable way to go. Um, I'm going to show you a reason why I like some other ones a little bit better, but this is a decent way to go. So after you apply the settings, um, then what it does is actually interfaces with the um, with the Windows environment, and you can set it to tile or center or stretch your background just like you're used to doing uh, when you set a background image uh, for your for your Windows machine. The downside being if you've got images that are in portrait mode and um, and you don't want them to be cropped or stretched unusually, you're going to have to have the center option set. You probably can't make that out on the screen, but that means that it could crop off the top and the bottoms of images. Um, otherwise, they're going to stretch out to try to fill the screen if you use stretch. So that's another reason why I didn't necessarily like that one. The other two that I found were actually screen savers. So if we go into the screen savers, the first one is called Slicker, S-L-I-C-K-R, and it interfaces with the Flickr accounts. And it's nice because you can set uh, it to look for a user or group names, or you could have it search across all the photos and give certain keywords. So that's kind of nice. It also allows you to change images anywhere from 15 seconds up to two days and you have a number of other options you can set as far as how you want the image to change. You will have to apply for an API key and uh, enter that information, then you'll have to go through an authorization, um, but that doesn't usually uh, take too much time or uh, too much difficulty. The only reason I don't like this um, is not really because of Slicker itself. I actually really like the Slicker application. It's just that the Flickr accounts only let uh, non-paying customers have up to 200 photos showing. So if you have more than 200 photos you want to show, then uh, you're a little bit stuck. I just uh, did this as I told it to look across everybody's photos for ones that had the word fish in them, and then it will go off and do a search. It takes a couple seconds for these to come up, so give it a second. So uh, maybe you get the pictures you want, maybe you don't. I'm not sure I want that as a screensaver, but that's up to you. Anyway, this has nice uh, fading in and out features. Um, it also will do a pan and zoom if you want that kind of a thing. And uh, what that looks like is... This. Again, give it a second for it to load up a picture or two. It's kind of an artistic effect, and you may like that or you may not like that. Um, kind of moves the picture, adds a little more uh, interest to the slideshow than just static images, but it kind of depends on what you want to do with your slideshow. The one I liked the best is one that Google has just come out, and it's Google uh, Screensavers. And if you do a uh, Google search for Google Screensaver, you'll find this. In the settings, you can have it look at your Picasa. Um, local images, your web albums, or you can have it look at RSS photo feeds. I liked this the best because you could get RSS photo feeds from a number of different sources, Flickr accounts, um, uh, Picasa web accounts, anything that's got an RSS feed, which is a whole lot of things. If you choose the web albums, 
you're going to have to put in a login information and uh, some people might not like that and you can only put in one um, username. I like the photo feeds because all Picasso uh, photo albums have the RSS link available and I'll show you where you can find that. So on the picassoweb.google.com we created a gallery for my mom and we have uh, 12 galleries in here, 12 uh, albums rather, and in each of the albums we put in a bunch of pictures that we thought she'd like to see on her screen. In the lower right hand corner of each album there's a link for an RSS feed. You can right click and copy the link location and then back in the Picasso um, the Google Photo screensaver you configure and you can just paste in that that photo feed address and add it to the list. And that way you can add a number of uh, photo albums that can be um, automatically updated anytime new photos are added. So what we did is we added some albums again that are specific to things that she likes and we also created one for each of her sons and then we can add photos as we like and then they will automatically update via those photo streams. So let's come back over here and we can t take a look at what that looks like on the photo frame. Um, the only thing I don't like about the Google screensaver, well there's two things. One is the maximum amount of time that you can set between photos changing is uh, about 10 seconds if you just use this type of um, wiped effect or crossfade effect. If you use the pan and zoom like on the Slicker account you can have it go up to 20 seconds but this laptop is a little bit older and it wasn't able to handle the uh, changing of photos with the panning and zooming. The video card just isn't that robust. The only other thing I don't like about this is down at the very bottom it puts the file name and the username that these photos are attached to and strangely enough there's no way to turn that off. Um, that probably won't bother my mom because she's not really a techie but it bugs the heck out of me. Um, I'm gonna live with it because I don't want to write my own screensaver and this is good enough for me. So there you go. There's the photo um, frame using an old laptop computer. The total cost is probably about 120 bucks. Uh, to get a photo frame that updated real time with a screen that was uh, 14 inches in diameter, you're probably going to call um, or in diagonal. You're probably going to pay about 250 to 300 dollars or more. And I've only heard of one that is able to do that. So feel free to post comments or send me an email if you have a question on how to do any of this or anything wasn't uh, really clear in my explanations.